Jaclyn Hill finally addressed the concerns with her lipsticks, and people aren't satisfied. Welcome to part two of this series on Jaclyn Cosmetics. If you haven't seen the first part, make sure you watch that video first in order to understand what's happening in this video. Please do not send any hate to Jaclyn Hill, Marlena Stell, or anyone else mentioned in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give insight on the situation. Also, this is the second part in a three-part series. Please wait until the end of the series before forming your overall opinion on what went down. With that out of the way, let's get into the tea. On June 12th, Jaclyn Cosmetics published a long statement addressing concerns on their customer service page. Jaclyn Cosmetics opened their statement by saying their lipsticks are safe. Despite testing and quality checks, a small quantity of the lipsticks purchased from our launch collection did not meet these standards. We thank all of those who brought this to our attention and want to assure everyone that our products are safe. They talked about where the lipsticks were made. Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks are made with cosmetic industry standard, FDA compliant ingredients and are produced in an over-the-counter compliant factory that is registered with the FDA. And they said the issues were related to the manufacturing process. The issues reported over the last several days are related to irregularities in the manufacturing process which are being fixed and do not impact the ingredients, formula, or safety of our products. According to the statement, the lipsticks were made in May 2019, the same month Jaclyn officially announced the launch of her brand, and the lipsticks were not moldy. The preservative system, the material composition of the formula, and processing temperature of our lipstick formula does not support microbial growth and protects the formula through the expiry date of May 2021. Jaclyn Cosmetics also addressed the gritty texture. In a small number of lipsticks, raw materials were not mixed properly or processed long enough, resulting in grittiness and particles. Despite the unpleasant texture, all ingredients in our lipsticks are FDA compliant and safe for consumers. They said the small holes people were seeing were safe. Small air holes that are actually pinholes can form as the lipstick is released from the silicone cup. The contained air is released during the final production process, leaving the tiny pinholes on the surface. This result is not uncommon and does occasionally happen during manufacturing, but does not impact performance or safety of the product. The statement said the lint was from white inspection gloves that were used to handle product and equipment during the manufacturing process, not specifically for quality control, like Jaclyn said. According to Jaclyn Cosmetics, the melting and tilting issue was caused by the shipping conditions. Our manufacturing partner, as well as independent third-party testing laboratories, conducted tests on each shade of the lipsticks and confirmed a melting point between 129 to 152 degrees Fahrenheit. However, a lipstick can soften at temperatures lower than the melting point if exposed to heat over an extended period of time. While we are able to control the environment during transit from our manufacturer to our warehouse, we do not have complete control over the shipping conditions from when a package leaves our warehouse to when it is dropped off at the customer's address. Finally, they explained why all the lipsticks had the same code at the bottom. We track our products through production codes, not batch codes, consistent with industry standards. Since the first production of our lipsticks were produced in May 2019, to support the launch, all production codes on the lipsticks match. Throughout the statement, Jaclyn Cosmetics said that anyone who wasn't satisfied with their lipsticks could contact customer service with their order number and pictures of the lipstick to start the return process. People weren't buying the company's explanations. Holy b I can't even believe the train wreck we're seeing. They're really taking a risk explicitly saying it's not mold. If any of these people doing lab tests come back with fungal spores, she's gonna look like even more of a fool. Marlena Stell also responded to the statement. I call on most of it. I've been trying to be vocal about how I personally have caught the lies and dishonesty for years now, but everyone is too busy stating that I'm speaking up because of revenge. When is everyone going to believe me for once? White gloves, even if the lab was ignorant enough to use in production, would not cause long strands or black hairs, and having lipsticks made the same month as launch, impossible and unheard of. You need time to assemble, inspect, label, and then ship out. You want to lie multiple times as a person? Still wrong, but it has slid by. You want to lie as a company, and especially at the potential risk of thousands of people's health? That's utterly immoral on an entire different level. Even I'm shocked. 
Later that day, Jacqueline posted a video titled, My Lipsticks. She said her lipsticks were not old. Let's start with the expired accusation. My lipsticks did not go into mass production until the same month that I actually launched my brand. It was only a couple weeks before, a couple weeks prior to my launch that we started actual mass production. Although I had been so in depth with my formulation, my colors, and approving all of that, mass production did not go into production until right before my launch because we wanted them to be fresh. We didn't want them to sit on shelves. She said she had manufactured lipsticks in the past but never ended up releasing them. And because my brand has been pushed back so many times, I actually already went through the same situation with a different lab several years ago. I went into mass production, ended up having an issue while in mass production and then didn't launch my brand and had to go to a whole new lab because I didn't want those issues to happen again. So I canceled them and went somewhere else. I tried to cover my tracks, I fed up, but they are not expired. Jacqueline said she had been working on her components for years, and just because people had seen her components in the past didn't mean there was a lipstick inside them. She said the lipsticks didn't have mold on them. Second of all, my lipsticks are not moldy. They are not hazardous, they are not contaminated, they are not unsafe for you in any way, shape, or form. Every single ingredient in my lipstick is new and it is FDA approved. And again, I will give you proof right here. Every single ingredient is FDA approved and they are not expired. Jacqueline said the black dots are oxygen bubbles. And they are being lifted to the surface when my lipstick bullet is being cooled off, when it's going from a hot temperature, fresh out of the vat, and it's gonna go into my actual component and just be cooled down so that the component cap can be put on top in that process. Sometimes those oxygen bubbles don't make it all the way through and you'll see little itty bitty, almost like black like holes. It's not actually like black holes. Again, it's not mold. It is oxygen and it is 100% safe. She said the grittiness wasn't happening on everyone's lipsticks. Now, although this is not happening to everybody, it's still happening. And basically what this is caused from is the humongous vats that holds all of your lipstick and it like spins like this and mixes everything up. That vat is not breaking down all of my raw materials because we produce so many lipsticks so quickly. Again, all the products in these vats are 100% FDA approved ingredients and totally good and safe for you to use, but they're not being broken down small enough and smoothly enough, which I take full responsibility for. And she addressed the white fuzzies issue again. Because my lipstick component is a silver, shiny, almost metal-like material, my lab, instead of using a standard glove that they would use in the lab, they decided to use white cotton gloves. They're like fluffy white gloves because they didn't want the standard gloves to put any smears on this component, to in any way have any sort of prints on it. So they wanna do a white fluffy glove. We have several people, up to 20 people, working on my lipsticks on the line every single day as they're being produced. And every single one of those people are wearing white gloves. When I tell you guys how many times a day they have to change gloves and put on new ones, it's crazy. And the second we saw this, we changed two different gloves that will not be giving this issue whatsoever. She also said her lab had an interesting way of cleaning the vats. On top of that, they were cleaning my vats that has my batches inside of it. They were cleaning those vats with like this white fiber, almost towel going through it. And that's been happening about once a day, they said, to sometimes twice a day, depending how quickly we're moving through batches. So with those two things combined, that is what you are experiencing, are little white cotton fibers. And she said she wouldn't be using the lab in the future. And for obvious reasons, we will no longer be making any more products with this lab because that's just, not what you guys deserve. Jacqueline ended her explanations by addressing the melting and sweating. She said around 80% of complaints have been related to melting. She said people shouldn't be rolling up the lipsticks all the way. People are receiving some lipsticks in the mail and then they pull them out, they twist them up, they swatch them, they break. They break in the center. If you twist them up all the way, they'll break at the base, which is pretty standard even if you don't have a melted lipstick. If you roll all the way up and you swatch it, Chances are, if it's an emollient-based lipstick, it's going to break at the base. She said some lipsticks were arriving with sweat marks on them, and customers should let the lipsticks cool completely before using them. We did an extensive test on my lipsticks and shipping from here to there and all this jazz. But because of the climate right now, we are shipping to some people who are in such hot temperatures and such high degree that my lipsticks, they're not surviving it fully. My testing actually came out to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. But once these lipsticks are getting onto trucks that are, you know, 100 degrees on the inside and then they're sitting outside of people's houses at their front doors and then they come home and they pull it out, 
yes, they're not fully melted all the way through, but yeah, they might have little sweat dots on them. When you swatch them, they might kind of lean to the side. Jacqueline ended the video by apologizing to her customers for a less than perfect launch. And I'm very sorry that this launch was not absolutely 100% perfect with a bow on it. Throughout the video, Jacqueline showed a few documents. The first document is a certificate laboratory analysis for the shade Batgirl. It showed various test data, including a swatch test, smell test, and visual test and it had a batch code that is different from the production code on all the shades. The lot number also doesn't match the production code. The document showed a manufacture date of May 15th, 2019, and an expiration date of May 15th, 2021. The next document is a certificate of good manufacturing practice. It says the manufacturer Jaclyn Cosmetics used to make the lipsticks conforms to the guidelines of good manufacturing practice as defined by the FDA, Health Canada, the Personal Care Products Council, the ISO International Standard 22716, and Cosmetics Europe. The certificate also said the products made for Jaclyn Cosmetics met the international requirements of good manufacturing and product control. But there are a few inconsistencies here as well. The document was dated April 19th, 2017, two years before the products were manufactured according to the first certificate. As well, the brand was referred to as Jaclyn Cosmetics, but around this time, the company was known as Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. She changed the name of her brand in March 2019. The third document is another certificate that says the manufacturer complied with the International Standard of Organization's Good Manufacturing Practices. The certificate is valid from August 7th, 2017 to August 7th, 2020. The final document is from a consulting firm that assessed the safety of the lipsticks. The report was dated May 2019. According to the report, these products are not considered to represent any undue hazard with respect to human health in normal use and under reasonable foreseeable use. All ingredients fall within the safe levels of use. The evaluation of the information available on the ingredients, their chemical structures, and the product does not indicate any significant risk to users. While some fans supported Jacqueline, most people didn't really like her video. Some people pointed out the inconsistencies. How can Jacqueline say she fired her old lab and is using a new one if she posted on Twitter that they changed gloves two days ago? No, sorry, it's the best lab in the US, but also a bad lab and she's not using them anymore. Still confused about 1. Why were there black hairs? 2. How, if the lab is so bad and she's switching labs, she's going to give people new lipsticks that aren't also compromised? 3. She claims that none of this affects the formula, but if literal ingredients aren't being mixed and melted, how does that not affect formula? Why did they rush production at launch when she spent so many years making sure everything was perfect? If the white hairs in the lipstick were linen fibers or microfibers, wouldn't the lipstick have colored them the same color as the lipstick? Others were curious about the lab's involvement. How can she fire her lab and find a new lab, remake all the formulas, colors, etc., and ensure they're up to par with standards and quality in days? Additionally, the new factory will need all of the unused components and packaging, and that will take time to pack and transport to a new location. I work in product manufacturing, and what most likely is happening is, one, lipsticks were rushed and come out subpar. Two, manufacturer comes up with excuses, Jacqueline buys them, and snaps back with the excuses she believed to customers. Three, more issues arise, contract is considered broken, as there is now a larger amount of viable proof that the factory didn't provide a quality product. Four, original factory will remake their lipsticks at their own cost. Five, Jacqueline hopefully finds and sets up a better manufacturer. My husband is a chemical engineer and has experience in processing plants. We just watched Jacqueline's video and he thinks one of two things happened. A. She used a very cheap, low-quality lab and is now paying for it. He talked mainly about the gloves she mentioned and the vats being wiped down were big red flags. Sounds like poor lab management or just sounds like people being cheap. B. She's lying. I've worked in manufacturing and there's a commonly used towel that's allowed on the floor. I know exactly what towel she's talking about. The only problem is that it's lint-free. Several people were concerned about contamination. So she's saying that the lipsticks were made by people wearing white cotton gloves in the production line. The vats were cleaned with white towels and that's what the white hairs are. Is she joking? That means all of her lipsticks are contaminated by fibers. All of them. I feel sick and I don't even own any. Jacqueline doesn't understand how contamination works. 
She doesn't seem to understand that raw materials can be tainted at any point of the process, and even fresh off the farm. Just because a raw material is new doesn't mean it's good. There's no contaminants. Some lint from the gloves people wore and the cleaning towel made it into the lipsticks. Babe, that's what a contaminant is. Some people thought the lipsticks were still old. If they were made so recently, then why do so many smell, look, and act expired? Are some shades already going off? For $18, you shouldn't have to deal with chunks, hairs, or black dots. Those factors alone are enough to want to return the product. So she says that photo from 2016 or whatever, showing her holding the tube was empty. Okay, cool, I can maybe buy that. Then she also says she mass-produced with a different factory and scrapped them. Then she just made these new lipsticks with a new lab a month ago. So why didn't you change the packaging to reflect your new brand name? The name change was filed, I believe, in January. That's not enough time to make a minor packaging tweak? when you can get 20 shades of lipstick produced and ready to ship in three weeks? I fully believe some of the lipsticks were produced recently. I also still believe some of them are hella old. A few people commented on Jacqueline's appearance. No makeup to seem relatable, sitting on a chair, leggings and a sweater. Who called it? Where's the user who was taking bets? Every beauty guru has a gray hoodie in their closet for just such an occasion. I can't get over this thumbnail. She's a grown adult looking like an angsty teen on Time Out or something. Many people pointed out her tone throughout the video. She sounds so angry that people dare challenge her. Nice passive aggressiveness with, so sorry this launch was not 100% perfect with a bow on it. Damn, no one asked for that. They just wanted lipstick that does not have black chunks, graininess, fuzz, hair, holes, and plastic beads. She sounds like a pissed off Karen ranting to the assistant manager at the Olive Garden about how she wants her entire meal refunded because the breadsticks didn't have enough butter. If Domino's delivers me cold pizza with hair on it, I don't want to hear excuses about how the oven guy wore the wrong kind of mitts. I don't want a video where the CEO wears a cute jogging outfit and lectures me about how some people like cold pizza. I don't want to hear about their FDA quality cheese. The pizza is disgusting and it's Domino's problem. Not my problem. I'm not paying for their gas to drive it back to the shop, or holding their hand until they wrap their heads about their screw-up. I just want them to take the disgusting pizza away and give me all my money back without an entitled, picked-upon, snotty attitude. And several people made jokes about the situation. It's been a few weeks since my ex called me and talked really fast and told me weird lies that don't make any sense, so I guess this video will fill that void for now. Anytime I up at work now, I'm just going to send a I don't know how it happened video in my sweats with no makeup on. But are the white gloves FDA approved for consumption since they're an ingredient now? Christy needs to bring back her microscope to see where Jacqueline is taking responsibility. Florida woman creates cosmetics with hair, fibers, and mold. Denies problems. Like, am I tipsy or is she full of this whole video? Fuller than a rectum. After Jacqueline's video went up, someone noticed she appeared to pick something off her own lipstick. So even here on her personal lipsticks during the swatching, even she had fuzzies on as if. At that point, it would have been smart to check the lab for any problems. Let's do as if because this is equally as nude, but it is a, oh my gosh, what is on there? It is a, sorry, this is my personal collection I'm using right now. Several people also shared their experiences returning their products. Jacqueline Cosmetics email can't be real life. Please read our return policy first to make sure your return meets the acceptable conditions. It literally says if you're not happy, we will take it back. Truly frustrating that I've gotten a generic response twice now indicating I will be responsible for paying return shipping for damaged lipsticks. Possible contamination means I won't be putting these on my face. I want this resolved. I don't want replacements. I just want my money back. I emailed at around 12.30 p.m. and 20 minutes later, I was issued a refund. I was refunded the entire amount, lipstick, taxes, and shipping, totaling $24.96. Beauty blogger Zadi Doll said the FDA doesn't approve ingredients. No, Jaclyn Hill, no. The ingredients in your lipsticks are not FDA approved. The FDA does not approve ingredients, only color additives. She also pointed out that smaller makeup companies typically don't own their formulas. Cosmetic companies often do not own their own formulas. The lab they work with does. This means when they switch labs manufacturers, they can't take the formula with them. Kevin James Bennett posted several tweets addressing Jaclyn's statements. The paperwork Jaclyn Hill flashed on screen during her video states the lipstick formula is anhydrous and is not expected to support microbial growth, but water is listed on the ingredient list? 
Is that paperwork for the fixed formula being produced now, not what was sold during launch? Just to be clear, you weren't aware of the manufacturing problems until a few days ago, but already have a new, third manufacturer working on fresh lipsticks? Fuzzy gloves so there are no fingerprints on lipstick cases? Fuzzy towels to clean out cosmetic kettles? This is not a thing! So basically, according to Jacqueline, Jacqueline Cosmetics worked with her second problematic manufacturer, released poorly manufactured, subpar product, but it's okay, she'll do better next time. It's not possible for any manufacturer to pump out over a quarter of a million lipsticks in 20 shades, fabricate, do quality control, pack, and deliver to the warehouse for fulfillment in four weeks, May 30th launch. Marlena Stell said the tight production timeline was possible, but unlikely in this situation. It's possible to manufacture in a month for production only. Roz would have to have been at the lab and lipstick tubes already there. But to add labels, put in boxes, and ship to the distribution center. And if this is true, then why were there tweets in 2017 stating lipsticks were already done? And why was I told in person before that even that lipsticks were done? I call more lies on this. Keep hoping there would be honesty once and for all. But that will never happen, I'm afraid. And coming from a business, now the FDA should be involved. John Hill, Jacqueline's ex-husband, also posted a statement on Instagram addressing the drama. I'll have your back in your hardest of times, like you had my back in my darkest of times. You've worked so hard for your makeup line ever since I can remember, and this was always your dream. I know this launch of your lipsticks has hurt you badly, and you did the best you could to try to make it perfect, but sometimes things don't work out and they're out of your control. Jacqueline did all she could in her power to make them perfect. Either way, I'm proud of you and what you've accomplished in such a short amount of time. When you're at the top, everyone loves you, but now that you're in this situation, you see who your real friends are. I'm sorry everyone has come for you so hard. You didn't deserve this much hate, but you're a bad and you'll pick yourself up again. I believe in you, and I know I'm not the only one. But this isn't the first product Jacqueline launched that had issues. In December 2014, Jacqueline announced the pre-sale of her favorites palette with Morphe, a collection of her favorite Morphe eyeshadows in one palette. It would be available for pre-sale on January 1st, 2015 at 12 a.m. EST. Morphe changed the time of the pre-sale to 12 a.m. PST, and 15 minutes before the pre-sale, the site crashed. On January 4th, Jacqueline addressed the situation in her December favorites video. I, of course, could do nothing about it. This is not my website. This is not my company. So as a control freak, I'm just sitting on the side like, oh, God. The owner of Morphe, she was freaking out. Her IT team, they didn't even know what was going on. It was a hot mess. Basically, they ended up finding out over 24 hours later that the issue that their website was having is that they were being severely hacked from multiple places. I don't understand how this whole IT thing works. I do makeup, not numbers. But apparently, these hackers were sending sending fake huge amounts of traffic to make the website basically crash and make it near impossible for you guys to actually order the palettes. Jacqueline said Morphe was working on fixing their website and despite the issues, the palette sold out in two and a half days. In June 2016, Jacqueline released the Champagne Collection with Becca Cosmetics. The collection included a face palette, Jacqueline's original highlighter, Champagne Pop, a new highlighter called Prosecco Pop, a liquid highlighter, and an eyeshadow palette. However, people were having issues with the eyeshadow palette. In a Snapchat Jacqueline posted, she said people messaged her about the palette. The eyeshadow palette is getting a ton of negative reviews, saying that it's dry, it's patchy, it's not Becca's original beautiful formula that everyone loves so much, and I completely agree with you guys. She said she was only responsible for creating one eyeshadow shade in the palette. Becca came to me and said, we want to do an eyeshadow palette. And I said, no, 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 we can't, we can't. I have so much going on. I'm working so hard on this collaboration as it is with the face palette. I have so much going on in my personal life. And they were like, no, no, no. What we want to do is we want to create an eyeshadow palette, Becca formulas, Becca colors, and we just want you to create one shade that represents champagne pop. According to Jacqueline, Becca sent the palette to a different lab to get the product out faster. So they sent this palette to a different lab. They were told that this lab could produce the same exact, you know, beautiful, creamy, high pigmented shades and shadows that they were always used to, so they trusted that. She said she had no control over what was happening. I was not aware of the situation because I was not as hands-on with this palette. I was just responsible for the shade of Champagne Toast, but I was just told that it was going to be Becca formulas, and that's that. She said that even though some people liked the palette, she and Becca made the decision to pull it. I was told it was going to be just the regular formulas. It wasn't. So because of that, we are going to be eliminating the 
Shade Champagne Collection eyeshadow palette all together. Now, Becca did not have to do this because of the fact that this technically isn't my palette, it's theirs. Because, like I've said a million times, this technically is not my palette, it's Becca's palette, and I was just responsible for one color out of the five. So they really didn't have to respect my wishes, but they see my frustration, they see my subscriber's frustration, and I promised you guys that I would never put my name on something that isn't amazing, and this palette is not what I thought it was going to be. So therefore, it is no longer going to be available on June 16th when it goes into stores. The eyeshadow palette will not be available. In June 2017, Jaclyn released the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Palette, a collection of 35 new eyeshadows Jaclyn created with Morphe. While the palette has received mostly good reviews and is still an extremely popular product, there were some issues around the launch and release. In January 2017, the day before the Morphe and Jaclyn collaboration was announced, a California bakery posted a photo of a cake they made in the shape of a palette. The cake had Jaclyn's name on it, and the photo was tagged hashtag Jaclyn Hill, hashtag Morphe. When makeup fans saw the cake, they immediately assumed it was an upcoming palette launch between Jaclyn and Morphe. Someone tweeted, is that how it looks like? Jaclyn said, no, it has some similarities, but no. Another person tweeted, disappointed. Jaclyn Hill, biggest collab in a Morphe palette? The color scheme doesn't even make sense. Looks like kids makeup, hard pass. Jaclyn replied, the palette you saw on a cake are not my colors. However, when Jaclyn officially revealed the palette in her YouTube video, the palette and the cake looked extremely similar. She addressed her comment in a Snapchat posted in June 2017. I have the saved tweet that says the colors are similar, but those and I still completely 100% agree. I still say the same thing. The cake is similar, but those are not my colors. I never said it's completely different. It looks nothing. When that cake was leaked, I had so many people tweeting me and Instagramming me saying, oh my gosh, there's so many pinks in this palette. I love all the shades of pink. And I'm like, there's not pink. The cake, of course, was similar, but it was not the same. Those were not my colors. There was like a lavender in that palette. I think I don't have a lavender. There were like several whites. I don't have those. And to have that palette, like the cake get leaked in the first place was so just crappy. Like it sucked so bad. And then for people to judge the colors already based off of the cake, I was like, no. I never meant to mislead you guys. I never meant to lie to you guys. Obviously, I knew that in a couple of months you were going to see the entire palette. So why would I lie? Why would I think I could get away with that? Beauty YouTuber Jen Loves Reviews also pointed out some inconsistencies with Jacqueline's story behind the palette's creation. She said the formula was not completely unique. I checked the ingredients to see if it was different, and I can tell you that it is different except for one kind of palette. So I'm gonna show a graph up here that I created of the ingredients of the Morphe products. So it seems like they have five distinct formulas. The 35 O, S, and M are a significantly different formula than the Jaclyn Hill palette. But if you look at the 25 pan palette, it is extremely similar to the Jaclyn Hill palette. The 25 pans have a different formula. That's what you're getting with the Jaclyn Hill palette. Jen also said the reasoning behind the higher price was misleading. Which is not true unless for some reason she got a different quality of pigments. Maybe they, I, I don't know, they're the exact same numbers, but maybe they ordered the pigments from a different lab. Jaclyn isn't responsible for buying Morphe their machines. So that shouldn't be part of the price increase. That should be a Morphe business cost. This is what I think. and. I I don't believe that any of those reasons are why this palette is more expensive. It's because of something else Jaclyn said, which is why I think this palette is more expensive. And this is my opinion. I think it's because Jaclyn ordered so many tests of the different shades. She said she ordered 25 changes on that one shade. That's expensive, okay? So she had probably tested each one of those nine shades at least three times, then removed them, replaced them with other shades, then tested those probably at least three times. I cannot even imagine how much lab time went into this palette in changing the shades. And she said the restock after the palette sold out in 45 minutes was inconsistent with how long Jacqueline said it took to make the palette. She was explaining why it took so long for the palette to come out. Well then, Jacqueline, I have a question for you. If it takes such a long time for these shadows to be pressed, then why'd you only have 27 days in between the original release and the re-release unless they were already manufactured? Just curious. Not that that's a terrible thing to do. It's smart marketing. Is it a little deceptive to say sold out when it's not really sold out in order to sell more palettes? 
Some people would just say that's smart marketing. In June 2018, Jaclyn announced the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Vault Collection, a collection of four eyeshadow palettes filled with shadows that didn't make it into Jaclyn's previous Morphe palette. Before the official launch, some people purchased the palette through early access events, and YouTubers received the palette in PR. But the early reviews for the palette were mixed to negative, with people saying the palettes had quality issues. After all the negative reviews started coming out, Morphe and Jaclyn decided to delay the official release. However, when the vault was finally released in August 2018, some people were saying the palettes were the same stock from before. Was the Morphe X Jaclyn vault actually reformulated? I received mine in the mail yesterday yesterday, and there is a label with new ingredients over the old ones, and they are different, so maybe they actually reformulated it. Also, I need to mention that all my palettes have V2 on them. LMAO, I saw that Ulta is selling the old launch from the Jaclyn vault with Morphe, and the swatches don't lie, sis. Workers have even admitted to that fact also. One person tweeted, Okay, Ulta Beauty, Morphe Brushes, Jaclyn Hill, which one of y'all thought we wasn't gonna notice you selling us these old palettes. We try to support you through all the BS, and this is the thanks we get? Y'all, check your palettes. I bought all four today, and only one is new. Jacqueline replied, That's not how it works, love. They are all new. Every old palette was removed from Morphe's warehouse and destroyed. These are just batch code numbers. V2 doesn't stand for version 2 like a lot of people think. If we wanted to be shady, we would have just launched two months ago. But there seemed to be another issue at play. The original vault packaging looks similar to the packaging for Jaclyn's collab with Becca. In late July 2018, Becca allegedly sent a cease and desist letter to Morphe, accusing Morphe of copying the Champagne Collection face palette packaging for the Vault Collection. Becca said Morphe infringed upon their trade dress rights on the packaging and constituted false designation of origin, palming off and trade dress infringement as well as interference with an existing agreement. In August 2018, Morphe filed a lawsuit against Becca, alleging that Becca doesn't have any right to the packaging. Becca claimed to have developed its purported trade dress rights through extensive use such that customers associate that packaging and the products on which it is used exclusively with Becca. But Becca only offered the product bearing the allegedly protected trade dress design through two limited production runs in 2016. Because Becca only sold the product through two limited releases, Morphe said Becca did not use the design enough to claim trade dress rights. But even if they did, Morphe said the Vault eyeshadow palette's packaging design and the Champagne Pop packaging design clearly differ. A month after filing the lawsuit, Morphe filed a voluntary dismissal of the lawsuit with prejudice, meaning Morphe cannot file another lawsuit on the same grounds. Drama channel Here for the Tea tweeted about the lawsuit. Sorry, Morphe is suing Becca, which was the actual reason for the delay. They were not manufacturing new pellets as they said. Jacqueline said, Everyone is entitled to their opinion, but this is 100% false. I am not speaking on a lawsuit. But Morphe got rid of all the old pellets and repressed and manufactured new ones. You can try to turn this into a scandal if you're feeling bored, but these are the facts. However, the Vault Collection is currently available for purchase with different packaging. In September 2018, Jacqueline addressed the Morphe Vault Collection situation in a video titled Let's Talk. She said some of the palettes had inconsistencies. So basically, we pushed back the launch date. We saw all over social media, beauty influencers were giving it negative reviews. Some people were giving it positive reviews, some were giving it negative. Overall, not good. We went in, we swatched hundreds, and we found inconsistencies. Pretty major inconsistencies. Linda came to me and told me, like, I am choosing to push back the launch. She came to me and was like, there's inconsistencies. I swatched them with my team. I've been watching the reviews for the past 24 hours. It's bad. We're pushing it back. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is going to be a huge scandal. Like, I'm disappointing people. Once again, like, here Jaclyn Hill goes, like, putting something out that... It's just gonna cause like an uproar and I'm already under a microscope for everything I do. Like I'm gonna disappoint my subscribers. She also talked about what happened with the first batch of palettes. So I did tell you guys that every single old palette from like the bad batch, if you will, was destroyed. I was wrong. That is what I was told, but it ended up not being the case. The real truth is that it has been quarantined. It has been moved to a completely different warehouse before any new shipment came in from China and shipped to Los Angeles, but it is gone. Like they said, there was not one shadow, not one palette left in that entire warehouse. But as of like a week ago or so, the palettes were in quarantine still and they have not destroyed them because at this moment they're analyzing these palettes, trying to get to the bottom of what happened and what went wrong and why such a huge amount were inconsistent. In the end of the day, the old palettes 
are not being sold. According to Jacqueline, the V2 people were seeing was a production code, and she said she got her information from Morphe's president of global operations. So I was confused just like you, and immediately when I see this, I'm like, what does V2 mean, right? So he explained to me that the first 15% of the pallets don't have a V2 after it, because they just don't. But after the first 15%, they all start to have a V2 because they realize that they're gonna have to mark it down. So there is one with no V2, there's one with V2, and there's also some that are coming out as of this moment with V3, V4, and V5. So it does not mean version two. I guess you could say it stands for like vault two, vault three, vault four, vault five, but the ones that don't have it are not old batches. And I'm gonna be real, if I was you guys, I probably wouldn't believe me. Like I'm just being honest. And like there is a moment where I didn't believe them. Linda would never lie to me. And Linda has been like investigating this right alongside of me. Jacqueline said that although the pallets were new, Morphe was reusing packaging. Are not selling you old, nasty vaults. But I will say they are reusing packaging. You will see that like on some boxes, there's like stickers over top of it because the packaging was really expensive on this collection and because they ordered so much, they were using the packaging, which isn't anything like controversial or weird. Like companies do this all the time. It's very common. She said Morphe told her the return rate was really low. Morphe came back with like actual stats and only 1% of vaults have been returned. 1% and the majority of them have been exchanged, not even returned for money back. Morphe personally have had 102 returns. That's it. The industry standard is 5%. So to see something so low, it's like, okay, but I'm seeing people complain online and I wanna get to the bottom of it, but yet only 1% has been returned. And then when I'm reaching out to people through DMs and emails, and then they're telling me, oh no, don't worry, like it's all good now, it's working great, I'm like, from my end, it's difficult because I want to fix this and I want to make it right. In the end, Jacqueline said Morphe would be offering full refunds. So like Morphe said, you know, like at the end of the day, we are offering full refunds for anybody who does not like it. As we can see, a lot of Jacqueline's previous collaborations have had some kind of issue, whether the issue was Jacqueline's fault or not. Around the same time Jacqueline made her official statements about the lipsticks, people with a background in chemistry started speaking out. Ashley, a PhD student with a master's degree in chemistry who runs the YouTube channel Molecular Makeup, made several videos about Jacqueline's lipsticks. In her updated Final Thoughts video, she said she couldn't recommend the lipsticks until there's some testing done. Ashley said she found fibers on some of her lipsticks. I did find the fibers on three out of my five lipsticks after I looked at them very closely. To me, that's a concern because that means there is contamination in the lab where it's being processed with these fibers. So the fact that there is contamination with these fibers is very concerning to me. She also had a theory about where the fibers came from. Someone commented that they were wondering perhaps could these fibers be coming from the actual lipstick components themselves, so the packaging or the tube that the lipstick comes in, I think that is possible because when I rolled up my lipstick, that is when I saw some of the fibers on mine when I rolled it all the way up. So it's possible that it could be inside the packaging. Maybe they had the lids sitting somewhere for a while and maybe somehow these fibers collected in them and so when the lipstick was you know, poured into the packaging. Marlena Stell did an Instagram Live with Ashley and Morgan, a chemist Marlena had recently worked with. Ashley said it was possible mold was on the lipsticks. Definitely there would have to be lab testing done. However, I did watch Raw Beauty Christie's video and I showed a microbiologist who is my colleague who has a lot of experience analyzing fungal spores and based on some of the microscopic images that she showed in that video, he said that it did appear to look like a spore, but again, we cannot say that for certainty without lab testing, but I just want the consumers to know that that potential does exist. When Marlena asked how fungal spores could get on the lipsticks, Ashley said, If there is any expired products as a possibility, perhaps the oils or waxes going rancid and the double bonds breaking down, perhaps that the oils breaking down and going expired, that could be a potential breeding ground, but, and it also could just be a risk from contamination from other particles as well. Ashley also had some theories on the hard balls found in some lipsticks. I had a couple of theories, perhaps either the butters are crystallizing or that 
the inorganic minerals such as the pigments perhaps they weren't mixed properly and somehow they are separating from the oils and butters in the formula marlena asked about the type of gloves typically used in labs yes we always use nitrile gloves because they provide an occlusive non-permeable barrier i personally don't think that white cotton gloves would be very sanitary because they are porous. We always spray down our nitrile gloves with 70% ethanol to ensure that no bacteria is on our gloves um, and to ensure sanitary conditions. Next, Marlena spoke to Morgan, the chemist she worked with. Marlena asked Morgan why different colors would have the same batch code. Why would different colors have the same batch code if they have different mixtures and ratios of pigments, per se? That is something that I've never seen before. There is different formula numbers and different batch code numbers, depending on the, the day that the production was made or the color. So that's something I've never seen before. Most of the time, we kind of use a code for the project and then a code for the shade and then a code for the actual trial itself. But depending on the lab you are working with, it can be also the day that it has been made, it can be a client number, it depends. Morgan explained the purpose of batch codes. Why do labs have batch codes? Like, what is the purpose of having them? The purpose of having them is that you can follow the production of each manufacturer. So basically, if you want to control a sample when it is on the market, you can kind of trace when it has been made. So you can kind of know which day which person has made this batch, so you have a lot of information. Uh, thanks to batch code. Marlena asked about quality control. Does the lab do quality control or does an external company usually do that for you? Actually, there is a quality team into the factory that will control at every stage and mm -hmm. every step of the way to the production mm -hmm. and to the sending of the manufacturer. So there is a quality team. We can also have a visit from external person. That's a possibility for the client or the brand maybe selling someone, it depends on the brand you are working with. Morgan said the holes in the lipsticks probably weren't an issue. What causes the little holes or little air bubbles in makeup and can that happen in production? Yeah, sure, that's not an issue also. This is something that we are seeing a lot because it is caused by the air actually. When we are mixing the formula, mm -hmm. sometimes the speed of the mixing can add some air into the batch. Okay. And so when we are pouring it into the lipstick mold, the air is kind of trapped into the formula, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of hard like that. She also said the sweating wasn't a problem. What about sweating? Is it common for, because even when we did concealers, I saw sweating on some of them. Can you speak a little bit on if that's normal? Is it safe? If you have too much oil compared to the waxes and the paste, the oil kind of breaks through the formula. It is not dangerous. It's kind of normal. We try to, as a chemist, to avoid that because it's kind of considered not okay. Marlena said people shouldn't overreact to the situation. I do think we have to be careful not to be like, hey, let's not use these lipsticks until there's confirmation from testing to say, are they okay to use? So just set them aside, put them somewhere, but let's not, you know, knowing that, hey, I'm not gonna use this, keep yourself safe. Let's not freak out and cause this commotion to where now it's like very extreme and all of that. We have to make sure that it doesn't go overboard too. Kenna Whitnell, a biochemist, made a video discussing the lipsticks from her perspective. She went over the ingredients. So what I can tell about this formula is it contains both oil soluble, so oils, waxes, butters, and water soluble ingredients such as citric acid, the lecithin, the benzyl benzoate, things like that are water soluble. She talked about the potential for bacteria growth. When we think about how bacteria can grow, the only things that bacteria and microbes need to be alive is water and organics. Organics meaning carbon-based materials. So that is things like oils, waxes, butters. So in this formula, we do have the perfect breeding ground for microbial contamination. However, there are a lot of preservatives in here. She said the single batch code for all the shades was logically impossible. Now, this is not possible because if you make a product that has different ingredients, different amounts of pigment in it, that's a different batch. That deserves a different batch code and it should be tracked differently because when something goes wrong, such as in this case, you need to be able to recall that product 
and chances are it wasn't the entire line. It should just be that one shade that was potentially contaminated, that one batch. And that's why batch traceability is so important. Kenna said the Play-Doh smell was a bad sign. I understand why people were saying Play-Doh. The scent of Play-Doh is actually, that's rancid oils. You're smelling oils that have gone bad. It's a notorious scent for rancid oils. Mm, yeah. She also debunked Jacqueline's explanations for the fibers. There is no lab in the United States that has an over-the-counter drug manufacturing license that would ever bring cotton gloves into their facility. It is a health hazard. The other thing that she mentioned in her video was that they used a towel, a cotton towel, to clean out the vats and the tanks that actually held the lipstick when it was being manufactured and pumped into the lipstick tubes. This doesn't happen. They don't use fabric, they don't use cloth to clean anything in those types of facilities. They use boiling hot water followed by 100% ethanol, which completely cleans out and eliminates all chance of bacteria. They would never introduce anything like cotton into that space. There's no lab in the US that would operate that way because you're gonna lose your license. She said Jaclyn Cosmetics needed to issue a recall. This does happen in this industry and when it does happen, it's on the brand to own up to it and put out a recall. Recall is a really standard process in this industry and you actually have to do practice recalls if you are producing over-the-counter drugs. And the fact that it hasn't happened yet, there's been no recall of these products when they're obviously contaminated and obviously not safe for public health, it's a huge issue. And she said it could be a health hazard for some people. For the average person, this is not gonna harm them. You know, it could cause a slight infection or irritation or something, but where this is a huge issue is in the immunocompromised, people that do not have healthy immune systems that can't fight off things like mold yeast and bacteria and they could get secondary infections or even the primary infection uh, could be extremely serious for them and send them to hospital with you know life-threatening conditions and that's no joke. Kenna said she would be sending her lipsticks to a lab to have them tested. I'm going to be sending both of these to a microbial testing lab so they can challenge the preservative system in here by putting it under extreme conditions, whether that's heat or you know humidity exposure, water exposure. And then they're also going to test for different microbes. What I am also gonna do with this is I'm going to send a couple other lipsticks with comparable formulas. While many beauty fans were interested in seeing the results, Kevin James Bennett alleged that Jaclyn's team was trying to shut the lab tests down. If Jaclyn Hill and Jaclyn Cosmetics have nothing to hide, why are alleged brand reps DMing people who lab tested the lipsticks and threatening legal action? Guess what? Someone you didn't threaten might have sent their results to the next level. Y'all know what the CDC is? Even after Jacqueline issued her statement, several influencers made videos about their experiences with the lipsticks. Kristen Leanne had several of the common issues in her lipsticks, but she also appeared to find an animal hair in one of the lipsticks. That looks like a dog hair. Look at that hair in there. Oh my goodness. This has literally an animal hair in it. I'm actually gonna take this to the vet tomorrow and have them look at it under a microscope and have them tell me if this is an animal hair. I am 99.5% sure this is an animal hair. However, the vet would not examine the hair for her. Pretty Pastel Please took her lipsticks out of the box while wearing a hazmat suit. While she was trying to be funny, she also wanted to ensure there was no contamination from her hair or clothing. I'm very excited to open up this box and have a look at those shades. This actually just arrived today. I have not opened it. I wanted to unbox it on camera for you guys, show you my very first impressions. Just like Kristen Leanne, Pretty Pastel Please found a lot of the common issues with the lipsticks, but she noticed a few other issues. She saw some strange marks on the packaging. Hmm, look. There's some little black dots on the outside. Can you see that? Uh, I thought that we were wearing white fuzzy gloves during manufacturing to prevent any imperfections on the packaging. Nope, this one also has a little white fleck on the edge of the packaging there. Ooh. Oh, look! You can see on the inside of the tube, there's like lipstick all around the inside and she discovered what appeared to be a piece of metal in the shade Sophia. Oh no. What is that? That is that. Do you see that? What is that? That is not, that's not a hair. That's not like a fiber. What is that? 
That... I swear to God, that is a piece of metal. I swear to God, like... That's... It's... it's reflective. Oh... Oh my lord! Oh my f No. 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 I have no jokes, I'm sorry. This isn't funny anymore. This was never funny. This is literally, that's metal. That is straight up either metal or it's glass because it's reflective. I'm speechless, speechless right now. That's absolute insanity. When she continued swatching the lipstick to see what else would be inside, she found another piece. <gasps> Look, you probably can't tell. On the end of the pin there is another little reflective metal bit. It's covered in lipstick because it's come from further in the tube, but that's definitely metal. See that? It's covered in lipstick, but it's shiny, it's reflective. Now I've found two. So if you look at the surface here, look at those really, really distinct, very straight lines. I'm going back and forth over this piece of paper, and I reckon that there's more of those little shards mixed in, but they're just covered in lipstick, so I can't see them, because those very, very sharp lines, they're so precise and so sharp that it wouldn't just look like that, if it was just little balls or soft things that are kind of catching on the paper because look how straight they are. I think that I'm catching something because I can hear it. After finding the metal, Pretty Pastel Please said Jacqueline needed to recall the lipsticks. That is a sharp object that is reflective sticking out of this piece of lipstick and Jacqueline Hill... Jacqueline Hill needs to recall this stuff. Literally, this isn't a game anymore. This isn't funny. This isn't her five perfect excuses as to why there's little imperfections here and there. She needs to recall it. Companies have insurance for like this. There's literally people putting up pictures of themselves being cut on their lips when they swatched it. And I was like, no, no, surely not. Like, surely someone's pulling a prank. There is something metal or glass in that lipstick right there. Like, this is not funny. I wanted this to be a funny video. This is nuts absolutely insane. Jacqueline Hill has no integrity if she is letting people continue to purchase this. The second that people started noticing anything, whether it was fuzzies or, you know, little bumps and things like that, she should have pulled it. This makes me so angry that this woman gets away with so much. She's had that many launches that have gone terribly wrong and it gets to a point where you notice the common denominator and that is Jacqueline Hill. And it turned out that Jacqueline Hill's first response to the drama wasn't her last. This is the end of part two. Again, please wait until the end of the series before forming your opinion on what went down. In the final part, preliminary lab results start to come in and Jacqueline speaks out again. All that and more coming up in part three.